Alright everyone, welcome back again to some more 999. We finally made it to a new area known as the Cargo, and we especially got to learn a little bit more about Santa, which surprises me because after what happened in the coffin ending, I don't necessarily know how to feel about the guy. He's, uh, like, I, I think they want me to sympathize with him, but I don't think I can. Like, yeah, I, I learned about his sister, and it sucks that, you know, that happened, but I may need to, like, we need to get more info from, uh, the other routes i guess for me to see for myself uh the whole of everything but if anything else guys we're going to continue on and see where it goes so thank you all for watching and let's get to it is this a warehouse and we're back everyone no i believe this is the cargo room this must be where they store all of this vessel's freight there are wooden crates everywhere i wonder how old they are well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going. And as soon as we start, we're hit with a new area. Seek a way out. Alright, so this is the overhead of the cargo room. The good news is it doesn't look as big as the previous room though. What was the other one called again? The boiler room? All right. These crates are quite large. They seem to be tied to one another with sturdy straps. Interesting. Uh-huh. There are a bunch of bags here. I wonder what's in them. Oh. Nice, we got snake. Car with snake's face printed on it. What's that? It's a card. It has a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah, I'm not really sure what purpose this could possibly serve. Oh, we got one with Clover. Was there another bag here? When I. Yup. Oh, it's this guy. Knight himself and Santa. Okay. Man, the guy in this car is one good looking son of a bitch. <laughs> Way more class than the other chump. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Huh? What's your problem? Didn't say I meant you, did I? <laughs> okay, um... Can move further in. This is the only area with a fence around it. Junpei, think you can go take a look at that? Sorry, but no thanks. Why? I've uh, got a bad feeling about it. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll go. Please be careful, Santa. Yeah, but just in case. Wait, what's he gonna do with that screw? I don't see about throwing a screw at the fences. Holy cow! This is... Oh man! There's electricity running through that fence! Looks like it. And we can't get to the other side. Well, we could jump off those crates, but we wouldn't be able to get back. Hmm. How do you know to throw a... Hmm. Alright, so let's not go there yet. They said we wouldn't be able to get back. Crates, yeah. What about... Box. Oh! We also got aces now. Oop. Oh, we got seven. Oh. It's locked. We need the key. All the boxes have numbers in them. Do they? Oh. Ace bent down, picked up something that had been sitting next to the box. Junpei, take a look at this. Cards. Nope. Oh, you got a uh, lotus. Mm hmm. Oh. This. There's something inside this crate. 
Oh, we got June. It's mine. Not cool, man. You took this picture without my permission. It's pretty cool, though. Look really handsome in this picture. Hey, knock it off, lovebirds. What? We're not a couple. Not at all. Not in any way. Alright. Can we open the blue boxes now? Now we finally have all nine picture cards. We just need to insert these cards into the slots at the front of each box. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Uh, yeah, of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers, then you pop the corresponding card in the right box. So for instance, the card with the picture of Ace on it goes into box one. The card with the picture of Snake on it goes into box two, and so... Oh, uh, I see. Huh? What is it? Hey! June, are you okay? I'm sorry, I, I gotta go check on her. You finish the box thing, alright? Uh, um... Just put the cards in the boxes. I'm counting on you! Are you alright? What happened? Can you stand? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. I just tripped. Don't give me that. Now is not the time. But it's true. I, I tripped over a box. Just let me see for a sec. Huh? You're still warm. I saw her fall. I think she really did just trip on something, you know? Still, to fall down like that? I think she's probably still a little messed up. Alright, well, let's just get out of here as fast as we can so we can get you to a hospital. Well, I don't think it's anything that serious. I just need a little medicine and some sleep, and I'll be fine. Medicine? Medicine, huh? Well, if we could get in touch with anyone outside, I'll bet Ace could swing that for you easy. Ace? Why? Huh? Don't you know? He's the president of a pharmaceutical company. Cradle Pharmaceuticals is the name, I think. Their flagship product is an anesthetic drug called Soparil. Soparil? Soparil? I've heard of that before somewhere. Isn't that what he used in himself? Soparil. It's an anesthetic that's a gas at room temperature. A lot like how nitrous oxide is. It takes only a few seconds to spread, and even a small amount is very effective. A bunch of countries quickly accepted it for widespread use within their police and military forces. It was an effective crowd suppressant and room clearer. It was practical, ethical, and the humane nature of it made it the ideal drug. It's been around for about six years. They developed it from the extracts of several different routes. It became popular almost as soon as it was made public, with many governments placing large orders. Demand for Soparil skyrocketed, and of course that meant Cradle Pharmaceuticals stock did too. Why do you know all of this? I heard it from the old man himself. From Ace? When? By the number four door at the central stairway, when we were searching the second class room. Remember how Snake, Seven, and you went to door five? It was back then. I asked him what he did for a living, and he said he ran his own company. After that, we just started talking, and I guess it just came up, you know? Okay, so now we learned a little bit more about Santa and more about Ace and how he's the president of a pharmaceutical company. Huh. Are you worried about something? No, nothing. Uh, what the hell is he doing? June, don't push yourself, alright? Yes. Santa, could you take care of her? I would not trust Santa with her. I'll go check on Ace. Looks like he's having trouble. Sure. What are you doing? What happened? Nothing. I... My vision has gotten rather blurry, I think, because of fatigue. I can't see very well at the moment. Oh my gosh. What can't you see well? These pictures. I don't care to admit it, but I may be developing presbyopia. Growing old is a difficult thing. At any rate, I'll leave the rest to you. Uh-huh. I'm feeling awfully tired, so if you don't mind, I'd like to rest for a bit. How could simply looking at cards have tired him out? Hmm. But if it wasn't, what had made him so uncomfortable? Prosopagnosia. Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. 
so they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. It's amazing how like all these stories, all the things we're learning, they somehow have relevance to our situation right now. Like you wouldn't think that like you telling like them telling us something like this would somehow have some semblance of a connection to what we're doing currently. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Maybe, maybe he's got prosopagnosia? Huh, well, he looks depressed enough to have it. <laughs> he looks depressed enough to have it. Oh well. Time to solve the nine boxes puzzle. Ace's card is in box one, Snake's is in number two. I just need to do the same for the rest. And finally, the ninth man's card into box nine. Yeah! Oh, they opened! What the? Nine pins? I guess I'll take them with me. Nine pins. These look like the kind of pins you use for sewing. There are nine of them in total, and they have numbers on them that run from one to nine. Alright, so we got ourselves some nine pins. We got Ace over here that's suffering from, uh, I can't pronounce the, the long term of it, but he's got like a memory issue where he can't remember faces. Alright, let's see where else can we go. Go upstairs. These stairs go up three stories. What are you waiting for, Junpei? Whatever, I'm going. This is the only door here except for the one we just came in through. Then this the exit? <laughs> of course it's locked. Is it an electronic lock? No, just a keyhole right under the doorknob. So to open this door, we've got to find the key that fits that keyhole. Yeah. Okay. Then down we go back. Mm-hmm. Hold on, did we explore all of this? Hold on. Uh, oh, no, we did not. Oh. What are you, sir? The monitor's off. Got a green switch here and a red one and some kind of lever. None of them seem to do anything, though. Maybe the power's off. And yeah, maybe. There's a single green light on the bomb, though. That means we check it out. Boxy. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is where we put the keys. There are six holes here. It looks like the pins I just found would be a perfect fit for them. The ones you found in nine boxes, right? Well, why don't you try it? Alright, let's see what happens. I think two, four, and six should go here on the top part, and three, five, and seven on the bottom part. Well, some of them lit up. Yeah, three and six. I wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which lights go on. Well, I put two, four, and six pins on the top part and the three, five, and seven pins on the bottom. Do you think maybe it's the digital root? The digital root. Two plus four plus six equals 12. The digital root of 12 is three. Therefore, our light three turns on. Three plus, ah, uh, wow. Three plus five plus seven, 15, six. Therefore, light six turns on. Makes sense, right? Let's see. Let's that match the digital root of the pins inserted on the top. No more parts will light up. So that's how it works. Well, there's one other thing that I'd like to check. If he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So, he put one, two, and three pins on the top. Six and seven, eight pins on the bottom. It turned off. Six plus seven plus eight. 21, 3 is your root. Therefore, light 3 turns off. 6. Therefore, light 6 turns off. Get it now. The zero root for the pin you insert is the same as the number of the lights that are lit. Those lights turn off. Yeah, looks like that's the trick. Alright. Now we know how it works. You want to give it a try? Wait, you mean you know what we're supposed to do with those lights? Well, no, but I figured we could try and see if we can turn them all on, you know? Here's something's gotta happen if we can manage that. Turn on the lights, huh? Okay, Junpei, let's make sure we know how this works, alright? Pick one of the six holes. Then pick one of the pins in your hand 
and insert into the hole. Keep it up until all six of the holes are filled. Once all, I wish I could go back. In front of the digital the pins and the upper parts will turn on. However, if the digital route corresponds to a light that is already on, it will turn off. Let's turn on all the lights. Right, let's do it. Okay. Ah. Uh, hmm. Let's go. And then. And then, uh, do we hit enter or just do we do lower? All right, let's see. Ah, uh, hold on a second. Nope. You do boom. Oh, okay. Alright, I think I'm getting it. Alright, uh... Let's try this. We'll try eight... Two... One for the upper half. And then for the lower... Go with... Seven... Four... So far, so good. Um, try this. For the bottom half. Almost there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ah, uh, okay. I'm trying to think. All right. Got it. Get it now. All right, cool. All the lights are on and the shutters opened up. Hey, does that mean that we gotta do it again? Man, I thought I was doing so well. Oh, more. Okay, so we've got nine holes. And there's an F up above them. I don't know what the F means, but I do know one thing. That's that. This time, there's nine holes. So we need to insert nine pins. Man, that's boring. Well, why don't you just try it, alright? Uh, nine. Okay. And this has F. Hmm. Okay. Hold on a second. Alright guys, after playing around with it for a bit, I realized that apparently all these have to equal 15. Horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. So, alright. We're gonna have to do it that way. Six. Three, five, seven. That's crazy, though. 
right here. There we go. All pins inserted, all lights lit. We did it. The power is on now. Looks like there's electricity going through the monitor on top now. Alright, let's see if we can activate the device on top. Please, let's do. A green button, a red button, and a lever. I wonder what these do. I think this might help. What, what the hell is this? Where did you find this? What is that? Where did you find it? I found it when you were messing around with the pinholes. It looks like instructions for this thing. According to what it says here, this thing's a remote control for that. That? Yeah. That. What's he pointing? Oh! The machine over there, apparently it's called the Pushmaster 5000. Are you serious? Whatever. So, what are we supposed to do with the Pushmaster 5000? See the coffin over on the top of the crates? Yeah? Don't you want to know what the deal is with it? I do. You want to check it out? Yeah? Alright. How do you think we're going to get there? Well, there are some crates on the right side of the fence that are some piled up like stairs. Maybe if we make a path to the coffin from there? How would we do that? Line up the crates, I guess? That sounds about right. I guess this is just another of Zero's puzzles. Yeah. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Oh, looks like the Pushmaster 5000 runs off a of battery. So to keep it from using up its battery too fast, it's been programmed so that it'll only start moving once its path has been completely programmed in. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. The material has been added to the file screen. Alright, let me check out the material that we got for the Pushmaster. Instruction for the Pushmaster 5000. Yeah, yep, in order to prolong battery life. Okay. You can move in four directions. You cannot move diagonally. The Pushmaster 5000's move count exceeds the battery life it will reset. Okay. Reset. Free input command. Back quit. Lever start command. Gives us all that. That's it. Okay. So we test it. The monitor shows the top view of the area where we can move the machine. Once I want to send my orders to the Pushmaster 5000, just pour the lever. Okay. There's the reset button. It allows me to start over again. Once I want to activate the program, I just pull the lever. Oh. Alright, let's give this a try. Good thing. Just keep in mind that there's a limit on the battery, alright? The battery dies after 50 moves. At least, that's what it says in the manual. 50 moves, huh? Also, keep in mind that the Pushmaster 5000 can't move the heavy metal crates, okay? Got it. When a square adjacent to the Pushmaster is touched, the Pushmaster will move to that square. If there's a crate in the way, the Pushmaster will push up to a single crate. Move the crates appropriately and efficiently, and fill the yellow areas. Okay. Okay, I'm done putting in the program. What do I do next? Just be quiet and watch. See, it's moving already. Awesome, the Pushmaster did just what I told it to and lined up all the crates. Great, now we can reach the coffin. We just need to climb those crates over by the fence. Ah, uh, we go down. Fur down, fur down, come on. Up. Yep. Mm. 
Mummy. Uh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, really? Really? Whatever. Just open it. Okay. Okay. A small key and a gun. The gun that this guy used. Yeah, a revolver. It looks pretty old. I wonder if this is a replica. This thing is... Are these real bullets? Oh, if this is real... Oh. You're not gonna take it? Of course not. All something like this is gonna do is cause more trouble. It's a powerful weapon that gives one person a huge advantage. Something like that would be way too dangerous to have around. We're in enough danger already. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Maybe Zero put this gun here, hoping that something like that might happen. In other words, maybe he put it here to make us fight each other. In that case, we should most certainly leave it here. I, for one, have no desire to let Zero control me. Me neither. Okay, we've got that figured out. But you aren't gonna leave that key in there, are you? Of course not. We'll take that with us. Got the rusty key. Maybe I can use this. So we're not gonna use the gun. And it's and we're certain that this guy didn't take it behind our backs, right? Alright, that means the only other place to go is up the stairs now, finally. Looks like it opened, Jumpy. Let's see, this key should open this door. Hey, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Yes, it's opening. Long hallway, huh? Let's check it out. We've seen this elevator before. We got off the one on the left just a little while ago. Then we went through the number six door, and that took us to the engine room. Yes, and after that we passed through the cargo room. And now we're back here. In other words, we made a loop. We're back where we started. Hmm. We needed a card to get to this point. I don't see a card reader here. Perhaps we aren't able to activate it from this location. Why don't you just try pushing the button? Yeah. It works. I think so. Good. Now we can go back if we need to. What do we do? Should we return to C deck? No, this hallway keeps going. Even if we do end up going back, I think we should see what's down there first. I agree. Let's go. Looks like it ends here. Only one door. There isn't anything else. It's the only way to go. All right. Let's open it. <laughs> the... <no> <laughs> Of course it wouldn't be that easy. Vacant. Huh. We finally found it. Ch jumpy Huh? Look! Behind you! What? A nine door. There's another one. Why? It's nine, no matter how you look at it. The red is there too. So this is a real one? Why? It, why the hell are there two doors? <laughs> there were always two doors. I mean, if you think about it. Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Of course, we just assumed that there was only one. After all, why would there be more than one? Oh, man. Uh, we fell for it. Doors. That means that all nine people who had met at the central staircase could escape. No one would be left behind. Now it makes sense why the bracelets are numbers. One through nine. Divided into teams of four and five people. The digital root of both teams ends up being nine. Take one, two, seven, eight, and three, four, five, six, nine, for example. The digital root for both teams would be nine. 
or 2349 and 15678. The digital root is still 9. There are a bunch of combinations that work, and they all end up the same way. If one team has the digital root of 9, so would the other one. What does that mean? The answer is simple. From the very beginning, the Nonary game was designed to save all 9 people. That's how it was meant to be. Zero didn't lie. He never said there'd be only one Nine Door. But anyone who'd found themselves in the game would have assumed that was the case. Fights would have broken out. One team would likely betray or deceive the other. Someone might be hurt. Someone might get killed. But eventually, they'd reach this very same room and realize how pointless all their infighting was. There were two doors. There was no need to kill each other. This game was designed for that purpose. This notary game. We were all arguing and fighting over doors at the beginning. But if there had been one slip-up, one tiny mistake that led to more, everything could have been so much worse now.